Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, we are going to look at how to use Excel to create a frequency distribution table. Uh, we have two different uh, scenarios. One is uh, just a straightforward, simple uh, frequency distribution table, like what you see right now. We have a set of data and uh, we want to create a frequency distribution table out of it. Another uh, scenario is that you have many, many different uh, numbers in the data set. Uh, it is not realistic to create a frequency distribution table for each different number in the data set. In that case, it would be just too many rows in the table. It's not uh, efficient table anymore. So in that case, we are going to create a grouped uh, frequency distribution table. So we are going to look at both scenarios today in this video. Uh, first of all, see this is the data that we are going to create a frequency table uh, from. And I already typed this data into a column. Now, the first thing we need to do is to sort this data set. We are going to use Excel function called sort. We sort it out from the smallest value to the largest value, or from the largest value to the smallest value. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go ahead and sort it. So first, we select this table. I mean, select this column of data. And then you want to right click, right click, see there's a sort function. From A to Z means you sort it from smallest value to the largest. So I click on that, see it's sorted, right? And if, if you don't have the sort function after right click on it, you can also find this sort function on the top in this ribbon area. Let me show you that. So I'm going to roll it back. This is the original data set. Then you still need to select it. I already selected the full data set. Make sure you select the full data set. And then you click on the top ribbon area called the data tab because you're going to sort the data. I click on that. See, there's a sort function right here, A to Z. I click on that, it's already sorted, see? They have the exact same function. Now, after you sort it, we want to identify how many different numbers are in the data. We have two, three, four, uh, five, six. We have five different numbers. This is one, two, three, four, five. Five different numbers. Then we are going to create a frequency distribution table, which always uh, had two, has two columns. So we have five rows and totally six rows because I need another row for the header. So I'm going to go ahead, go back to the home tab. Now, the first column is always a value column. This is the value. If this values have a specific name, such as uh, testing scores, you can write the scores here. And the other uh, is frequency. In this case, we don't have a specific meaning for these numbers, so I just use the general uh, names for these two columns, by its value, by its frequency. Otherwise, if these are uh, testing scores, and this number represents uh, the, how many points each student get. And this frequency simply is the number of students. The value is the point uh, on the quiz. So now, let's say uh, we have different values, five of those, two, three, four, five, six, right? Let me put, put all of this number in the middle. It doesn't really matter, actually. Now it's time to do frequency. That's why we learn how to use Excel to count frequencies, because after you sort this data, it's very easy to count how many of, how many times each 
uh, data point occurs in, in the data set, right? For 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 two, it occur five times. Five times. And three, how many times? I, actually, you can count this one by one. Actually, there's an even another way to count it, even though we, it's not our focus today. You can use a count function in Excel. Whenever you do any calculation in Excel, you always start with equal sign. Say count, open the parentheses, just select the cells you want to count. I want to count all of these threes. Close the parentheses. I have seven threes. And you can do the rest in a similar way. Let's say, is that true? Seven threes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See? It's very easy to do. How many fours here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six fours. And two fives, apparently. And how many six? Three six. And how do you know you counted correctly? See how many numbers we have. Uh, let's count how many numbers using count function again. Count function is very, very handy. So let's just select all of this. How many numbers I have? I have 23 numbers. So this frequency is I guess it has to be 23 to be correct because you count how many times each number occurred. So 5 plus 7, 12, 18, uh, 12, 18. All right, 12, 18, 23, 26. Well, something is wrong for sure. Totally 23, is that 23? So that's two, how many tools? Five tools, how many threes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, how many fours? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six fours, that's correct. And how many fives? Two fives. Say I made a mistake. That's exactly why we why we want to double check. Let's calculate again. 12, 18, 20, 23. Now everything is right. So there's a frequency distribution table. Now let's look at another scenario where we have group frequency distribution table. I copy this uh, from your uh, homework page. So basically, this data represents the number of hours in one semester that a group of uh, QR students spent working on their project. So these numbers represent hours. You see many, many different numbers. If you use each different number uh, as, a, as a row in your frequency distribution table, like in the previous example, they would have too many rows, right? That's why we have this interval or grouped uh, frequency distribution table. Now we want to know how many students spend uh, the number of hours between 45 and 49. How many students spend the number of hours between 50 and 50, uh, 58 and, and so on. So we want to find the frequency. How to do that? Basically, it's very similar. First, I already typed all of these numbers in, in this same column and uh, totally 40 of them. Each column has four, we have 10 columns, so total 40 numbers. Now, like in the previous example, I'm going to sort it. So I select this uh, column, make sure I select all of them, and right click, sort. Now, let's count. It's very easy after I sort it. How many between 41 and 49? Uh, there's a four between 41 and 49. So that's a four. And uh, how many between 58 and 59? One, two, three, four, five, right? Five. So I just I just do one more. I don't I'm I'm not gonna do all of this as long as you get the idea how to do that. So how many are between 59 and 67? Uh yeah, this starting with, with 62, we go to 67, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the six. 
Yeah, this is how you create a frequency distribution table, how to find those frequencies. Basically, you want to type in your data in a single column, then you use a sort function. It's very convenient. Okay, uh, see you guys in the next video.